secret agent K-7 returns. Number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. And here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, recently a nation faced invasion. However, the power that threatened knew that world disapproval and perhaps reprisals would be bound to follow any military move. This knowledge resulted in a new form of attack. Spies were sent into the country with instructions to win sympathizers, arm them, and create a situation that would look like civil war. The pirate nation could then send in its troops to reestablish order. Such is the background plot of the story which John Holbrook now introduces. Thank you, K-7. All nations today face one problem, that of enemies within their borders. Some of these enemies are spies. Others are aliens, still others citizens and naturalized citizens. Recently in some parts of the world, attempts have been made to arm these enemies. Such was the situation which was responsible for Special Agent M being called to the office of a certain high-ranking military official. We join him as he and his assistant, Ivan, study several bullets on the official's desk. Yes, I have seen bullets like these. They're made in but one country and fit only that country's rifles. I had no idea your government was buying munitions for them. We are not, Special Agent Dem. Then where did these come from? A case of these bullets was found at the side of one of our roads. It had evidently fallen from a truck. And does that mean these bullets were brought into the country without your knowledge, monsieur? Exactly. The implications are that someone is smuggling munitions into this country. But why? I can guess why. Your government has been, uh, shall we say, a little uh, unstable in recent months. Uh, that is true. We have three powerful political parties. One of those parties sympathizes with our enemy. If its members should be armed... Is the fact that one case of bullets was found enough to make you believe that? No, mademoiselle. That would be jumping at conclusions. However, the fact that such a case of bullets was found proves this letter which came this morning is important. A letter? Who is it from? One of our customs men at this small border town. Here, read it. I have definite proof that arms are being smuggled across the border at this point. If an investigator is sent, I will give him all necessary information. We will start tonight. Agent M and Yvonne left for the border by train early that evening. However, they were to be too late to interview the customs man who had written the letter. As their train sped through the night, a black sedan moved up the street of the border town. Are you ready? Yes. He lives in the second house ahead. As we pass, throw the bomb through one of the windows. I'm ready. Right. Agent M and Yvonne arrived the next morning. They heard the news immediately. We joined them as they talked together a few hours later. Now, we've got to be cautious, Ivan. The man whom we were to see was killed last night. Somehow the men who were smuggling arms knew that he betrayed them. They dynamited his home? Yes, it was completely wrecked. However, we're not going to let that stop us. While you were keeping out of sight, I found out a few things. A large, fast truck passes through two or three nights a week. How did you discover that, Em? On one of the early trips, a peasant was stopped and asked directions. Others have seen it. These people don't want to talk. 
I have to satisfy myself with bits of information gathered here and there. However, there's one piece that is important. Go on. It means a job for you. There's one cafe here that is quite large. The customs men who are off duty make it their headquarters. Ivan, have you ever had your fortune told? Of course. Every woman has it sometimes. Good. Tomorrow night, you're going to become a gypsy. And you're going to tell fortune. The next night, Devon appeared at the cafe dressed as a gypsy. In a few minutes, a soldier in the uniform of a private came in alone and seated himself at one of the tables. Your order, monsieur? A wine. Grand Van Royal. At once, monsieur. Cross my palm of silver, and I will tell you of the future. Let me tell your thoughts, monsieur. Uh, later, perhaps. The two men in the corner circled toward them. Thank you, monsieur. I will come back. Cross the gypsy's palm of silver, and know the future. How much longer before we cross the border? Another hour. The truck is being loaded. We go over after it at 10 o'clock. You will have no trouble? No, of course not. Do you think these other fools want their homes bombed? No, we'll have no more trouble. <laughs> and the guards who are left like the money we pay them too well. Cross the in another month, we'll have brought in enough guns to harm everyone who sympathizes with us. In the revolution. A toast to the revolution, my friend. Keep quiet. Monsieur, let me tell you about the future. Cross my tongue with silver, and I will tell you of the future. We are not interested. Oh, but I am interested, Sergio. She's beautiful. Sit down, mademoiselle. Thank you. You would like to know if you ought to have much gold, monsieur? Well, you can tell me. This is foolish. Your friend does not believe, monsieur. Give me your hand, and I will show him. It is all in the lines. It will be pleasant to have you hold my hand. <laughs> now tell me I will be rich. Monsieur, your hand is strong. And the life line, it is long. You will live to be old. I suppose you see a fortune for him, too. A fortune? Oh, that is a fate will be. Your hand shows many things, monsieur. This line. It means that you do as you please. Laws mean nothing to you. You would murder a man if you thought he had betrayed you. What did you say? It is in your hand. You would crush your enemy. You are a man of action. Yes. And here is another line. It shows that you do things people do not know about. You work in the night. Your work is dangerous, too. What are you saying? Stop. I don't want to hear any more. There is more, monsieur. You are interested in guns. Let us get out of here. Yes. Uh, time we were starting. I don't want to hear any more. Come on. Here's your silver. Thank you, monsieur. Let the gypsy tell you, monsieur. Yvonne circled the cafe as the two men left. She walked slowly. A few minutes later, she again stopped before the soldier's table. Did you find out anything, Yvonne? Yes. They are the two you are after. As I came up to their table, the one who let me read, read his palm said, in another month we will have enough guns to arm everyone who sympathizes with us. Then he toasted the revolution. Good work. Anything else? Not much. Only that I frightened them by hinting at things we already know. The second man said it was time for them to start, and they left. Time for them to start? That may mean they're going to bring through munitions tonight. Ivan, I'm leaving. I want you to follow me in a few minutes. Walk straight up the road. I'll be waiting for you in a car. A few minutes later, Ivan joined them. She found him at the wheel of a powerful roadster. Together, they drove to within a few hundred yards of the customs house at the side of the International Highway. M stopped the car in the shadow well off the road. We'll wait here, Ivan, or at least you will. I'm going to try and get as near the customs house as I can in the darkness. Uh, push over behind the wheel and keep the motor running. We're going to follow the truck if it comes through. Yes, we're going to follow it and seize it, Ivan. As soon as it comes... I'll run back here, and we'll be ready to go. Wait, 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 Foster. Now, I may not have time to do more than jump on the running board. Now, that's all. Keep your eyes open. M cautiously made his way to a spot near the customs gate. To his surprise, he found the gates open. There seemed to be no one around. He decided to go on for a few hundred feet. Then he saw the lights of a truck approaching. It passed him at high speed. Further down the road, Yvonne also saw the truck coming. It flashed by her, but she could not see him. Why doesn't M come? We won't be able to catch them. M, where are you? 
something must have gone wrong. Stop. I'll do it myself. I can see them ahead. I'm catching up. Almost alongside. Stop! Stop her! I'll shoot! Stop her! I'll shoot at your tires! <laughs> taken a picture of the truck with his infrared camera as it flashed by. Then he ran toward Yvonne in the car. Before he could reach her, she sped away. A minute later, he heard the crash up the road and ran toward the spot. Yvonne! Yvonne! Are you all right? Oh, there's something ahead. Yvonne! Em, over here! Are you all right, Yvonne? Yes. When I stopped their tires, they swerved into me. I went into the ditch. Where are they? Here. Both of them are knocked out. Oh, I'm afraid they're more than knocked out. Here, wait. What's this? A code book, Ivan. This book, it was in one of their pockets. Yes, and here are names and addresses. Ivan, this book is more important than the truck. It will crush the ring of spies and sympathizers who are plotting against this country. <laughs> Addresses found in the book, the authorities located a fully equipped military headquarters in a basement in the center of the nation's capital city. Wholesale arrests followed, and there was a great national scandal. The plot to cause a revolution was crushed. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking.